predica, por favor. Uh, go ahead and turn your uh, Bibles to Jonah. Yeah. Oh, Jonah. 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 So if you're uh, visiting today, we've been going through the Minor Prophet series. And so those are the last nine books in the Old Testament. And they're uh, not called the Minor Prophets because they're weak sauce. It's just shorter books. But they uh, pack a wallop uh, when you study them out. And so today we are in the book of Jonah. And the title of the lesson is The Power of God. And uh, I'm super fired up because, uh, you know... Uh, in this book, we actually get to see God participate, and uh, you see His power in action here. And so, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, we're so there's four chapters, and so what we're going to do is we're going to do the odd chapters first, chapter 1 and chapter 3, and uh, that title is, The Power of God Brings Salvation. And then... Uh, Chapters 2 and 4 will be the power of God restores our heart. Uh, so, yeah, we need that. Yeah. All right, so read with me here in Jonah chapter 1. We'll start in verse 4. It says, Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God, and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. And so here you see a ship filled with sailors and Jonah. And uh, God sends a powerful weather storm. A great wind, a violent storm arises. And so you see the power of God. And what happens? It creates this fear in the sailors. And you know, sometimes we have storms in our life. Yeah. And uh, isn't it interesting that we start to prioritize things differently? Oh, oh wow. Yeah. You know, uh, I was just watching some interview, and uh, uh, he's a politician who uh, doesn't really care what he says anymore. He, he just <laughs> went through a heart attack. And I don't know if he's Democrat or Republican. I don't know. I don't care. The point is that... He doesn't care what anybody thinks anymore because he's experienced a, a life and death, you know, wow. experience. Yeah. And, you know, you start to prioritize things different. And so God understands that when he brings a storm into your life, he wants you to start to prioritize things different. Mm -hmm. And so we have things in our life. The Bible calls it here cargo. <laughs> and he's like, get rid of the cargo in your life. Sometimes we hold on to stuff that we, we should not be holding on to. Uh, whether it's relationships, oh. or we care too much about what people think oh, oh, to be a disciple. You know, maybe your own family. Oh. Uh, and we've got to get rid of the cargo so that uh, we can have the power of God bring salvation to our lives. Verse 11 says, The sea was getting rougher and rougher. God brings more power. So they ask him, Jonah, what should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to the land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you pleased. They took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. So here you see that uh, they go to the man of God, like, what should we do? And it just didn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. We'll do something else. And so they use their own strength mm -hmm. to try to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And you know how that works. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You go to a man or woman in your life of God, you know that they're a disciple of Jesus Christ. You get some sound advice, but you're like, no, nah, I'm going to just do it my way. Oh, mm -hmm. no. 
And what happens? It just gets wilder than before. Yeah. That is a promise. But they go ahead and, and follow the direction. And then as soon as it's calm, they offer a sacrifice out of fear of the Lord. You know, this topic keeps coming up, the fear of the Lord, yeah. throughout these. And it is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. And I, I think, well, you know, if you ask yourself, why am I stuck in this situation? Uh, you've got to ask yourself, where is your level of fear of the Lord? Mm. Uh, we, we've got to revere God in a deep, deep way. Mm. And, you know, uh, people come to me and they go, why do you always talk about you know, giving financially and going out and making Jesus Lord of your life and sharing your faith. Because it's in the Bible over and over again. Look at this. They offer a sacrifice and make vows to Him. We make a vow when we get baptized that Jesus is Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is the King of Kings and we're going to do whatever He says. Yeah. And, uh, and He says, hey, you need to go and make disciples of all nations. And so this is what we do. Look at uh, chapter 3. So the power of God comes. They decide to stop praying to their own gods. They pray to our God. God answers them, calms the storm, and salvation comes to the sailors. And you know what kind of reputation sailors have. It's not good. But you know what? God loves sailors. God loves sailors. He saved the sailors. Jonah 3, verse 1. When the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, Forty more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. Look at this. God sends his messenger, mm -hmm. and he gives a powerful message. And what's his message? God loves you, and he wants to take care of you. No, that's not his message. He's like, repent, or you're going to be destroyed. <laughs> repent, or you're going to be destroyed. Too many of us are afraid to say that to people. You, you want to convert people's hearts by going, God loves you. Now, does he love you? Yes. yes. Yeah. But the message needs to be, hey, if you don't change, destruction is coming your way. Like, you got to add that to your message. Amen. It's a powerful message. It says that the Ninevites believed God, and a fast was proclaimed. The message was directly from God. They knew it was coming out of the mouth of a man, but they believed that it was God. Right. And you know what? We don't need that anymore. You know why? Because we have what's in your lap right now. Oh, yeah. The Bible. It is the message of God. It is the very message of God. Yeah. We've got to believe the message of God. Yeah. Get in there and dig in and do some Bible study. Verse 6. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself in sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Wow. The king himself, the first to respond, he humbles himself before the Lord. Verse 7, this is the proclamation he issued to Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Isn't this amazing? Yeah. The king repents. And he, because when you repent, the Bible says that times of refreshing come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so here he humbles himself before the Lord and God gives him a time of refreshing. Amen. And when times of refreshing come, you just want to share that with everyone. Yeah. He starts calling to everyone. Everyone needs to call in the name of the Lord urgently. It's an urgent situation. What are you waiting for? Go and bow before the Lord. The power of God brings salvation. So first he brings the storm. First he brings the storm. Wow, that was totally what God did. He brings the storm. And uh, he saves the sailors. 
And in this case, he brings a message, a powerful message. Mm. And he brings salvation to the whole city. The whole city changed and followed God. And so I want to challenge you. God has a message on your heart. How do I know? Because he has made you into a sold-out disciple of Jesus Christ. Come on. And he wants you to do the same thing. He wants you to go out and save the city. Go save the city. Whether it's in Albany, where we're going. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's in Rochester, where Linda's waiting for the church we have Or here in Syracuse. We need to go out. Uh, so I want to call all the new house church leaders, family group leaders, to come up with a campaign where we go throughout the city and we bring a powerful message of salvation. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. That was my first point. My second point, the power of God restores your heart. Chapters 2 and 4. But uh, let's get a running start in, in uh, chapter 1. <clears throat> chapter 1, verse 1. You guys with me? Yeah. yeah. All right. You know, growing up, kids, they love this story of Jonah. Mm -hmm. Jonah and the whale, right? Yeah. yeah. But I, I've been asking people about Jonah, and uh, mostly the brothers, and they don't like Jonah. <laughs> like, oh, he's weak sauce. <laughs> I, I don't like Jonah. He's mean. I heard someone say he's mean. Hey, yo. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a hard heart. Let's see how God restores his heart. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for the port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. And of course, we know the storm comes. And everyone's praying to their God. And uh, Jonah just goes to sleep. He goes down below and just goes to sleep. And sometimes, that's us. The storms in our life come, we get overwhelmed, and we just want to check out. We just want to go to sleep. This is why people don't like Jonah, because it reminds you of you. Ooh. It reminds you of you. It reminds me of me. When things get overwhelming, I just want to check out. He's like, go save that city. Forget it, I'm out of here. And we can feel that way. Maybe you won't say it, but you'll do it. It checks out. Look at uh, verse 6. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. He's saying, Can't you just pray? Can you just get up and pray? And, and he, he refused. He doesn't pray. He, that happens to us. We can be so overwhelmed, we won't even pray to God. We won't even pray because we feel so guilty that we're not obeying God. Verse 8. So they asked him, tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Wow. Here's a guy proclaiming to be a follower of God, and he's asleep down below and won't pray. It's not good. Doesn't that remind you of you sometimes? Yeah. You're, you're a follower of Jesus. You've got all the power of the Holy Spirit at your disposal, and yet you're totally checked out. Not going out and making disciples. But on Sundays, you claim Jesus is Lord. That's what he just did. In the midst of his hypocrisy, he says, I follow the one true God. Wow. So Jonah decides to die. He's like, just throw me overboard. Verse 17. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. God was not done with Jonah. And he's not done with us. 
chapter 2, verse 1. Here we go. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the current swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. <laughs> Three days in the belly, and he prays to God. Now, some people say that the fish kept him safe, and then he was spit out. Some people say he died, and God resurrected him uh, and by spitting him out. But you see his prayer. This we know for sure. We see his heart in this moment. He decides to pray in the midst of the belly. And God answers, and he resurrects him. And, uh, you know, when, when this happens in our life, when we get the refreshing... We look towards the temple, it says several times in, the, in this prayer, that he looks towards the temple. And we are the temple. Mm. And, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it reminds me of, of Jermaine. Come on, Jermaine. 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 He needed restoration in his life. Yeah. And, and you know how hard it is to make that decision to come after you've left for a while? Mm -hmm. How brave mm -hmm. you must be to do it. Yeah. And I asked him today, I was like, how did, how did you feel? He's like, you know, the moment I came in and all the brothers in the back came and put their arms around me, mm -hmm. he's like, I just remembered God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Before that, he said, I, I was at home and I was lonely. Mm -hmm. I had nobody. Mm -hmm. And when God helps you, it restores you and you yeah. look towards the temple. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. We love you. Yeah. He also confessed his sin. Yeah. It says that uh, he held on to worthless idols. Mm -hmm. Come on. And what does that mean? Well, it's, it says here that it's turning away from God's love. Mm -hmm. So anything that you do that turns away from God's love is idolatry. Mm -hmm. You're living a life of idolatry. And he's like, I'm not going to do that anymore. Instead, I'm going to shout grateful praise sacrifice to you, make good on my vows, and I'm going to tell everyone that salvation comes from the Lord. Love is not a feeling, it is what you do. It's action. Uh, you know, um, Come on. Uh, some of the guys went out collecting money for our missions plan, and Kyle took a picture and sent it out. And uh, what struck me was that uh, Val was there. Our sister Val, who is in Kids Kingdom serving right now, um, she's already given a thousand dollars over her missions. Wow. And yet she's doing yeah. more work to raise money for missions. Mm -hmm. Like she understands what we're trying to do and she goes after it. I was blown away. Yeah. And then I teared up when I saw Maria there. Come on, Maria. Maria. Maria has every reason to not love God, yeah. mm -hmm. and yet she loves God so much, mm -hmm. and she loves the church, and she loves what we're doing. She's out there raising money for missions. Come on, Maria. Come on, Maria. I'm so proud of you, Maria. Mm -hmm. So proud of you. To put on your mercy shirt and get out there, yeah. uh, I, was, I was just moved. Uh, I believe that is a shout of grateful praise, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. bringing sacrifice to the Lord, making good on our vows. Amen. You know, chapter 3, he delivers on his vow. He goes to Nineveh, 
and he preaches yep. a powerful message, and the whole city is converted. Look at chapter 4. Come on, bro. The power of God restores the heart. Chapter 4, verse 1, it says, But to Jonah this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. What's going on, Jonah? It's humanity. It's what happens in our life. <laughs> we're fired up, then we're not fired up. I mean... He just went and preached a powerful message, and the king himself surrenders to our God. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the situation. Nineveh is the capital city of Assyria. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the history of uh, Jonah as a prophet, he actually did some great stuff. He took the size of uh, Israel and expanded its borders, and it was right uh, up against Assyria. And Assyria was the enemy of God. And they did some wicked, evil stuff in battle. They would impale people and light them on fire. It was, he was a ruthless, ruthless king. And here, uh, God tells Jonah, I want you to go to them and preach a message. Wow. And, and so he obeys. He does it. Not at first. He has to get swallowed up by a whale. <laughs> but he does it because of the power of God. He goes and he does it. And now he's upset. He's upset that it worked. <laughs> so, what happened to his heart? Well, he went back to cling to worthless idols. It was a very racist thing happening in his heart. That salvation should only be for a certain people. Right. And, you know, God had to work on his heart some more. Look at verse 4. But the Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry? Jonah had gone out and sat down at the place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade to his head, to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. <laughs> but at dawn the next day, God provided a worm, which chewed the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, he said. I'm so angry, I wish I were dead. This is us. This is us. God comforts us and if our heart doesn't change, he discomforts us. He's trying to get us to have the right heart. To restore our heart. Verse 10. But the Lord said, You've been concerned about this plant, though you do not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, mm -hmm. and also many animals? This is where it ends, right there. It ends with God trying to restore his heart. And of course there's nothing else, because he's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's like, you're concerned with the little things. The plant, it's here today, gone tomorrow. Your little things are here today and gone tomorrow. Can't you see the big picture? There's 120,000 people in this city. I'm serious. Look outside. There's 120,000 people in this city. And animals. You know, disciples are supposed to love animals, too. God yes. loves the animals. <laughs> Jonah was looking at his circumstances, right. and his own personal circumstances make him go up and down, up and down, when we don't look at the big picture. God wants us to look at the big picture. Yeah. The 100,000 people plus that are here in this city, 
Yeah. The 100,000 people that are in Albany. Yeah. Yeah. The 100,000 mm -hmm. people that are in Rochester. Mm -hmm. This is what God has given us to go and do. And there are going to be people that you don't like, and you got to get over it because there's a, a bigger picture involved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, there are people that you think, oh, God shouldn't save them. They're sailors. They're gross. No, no, no. God saves the sinners. Yeah. You got to get that out of our heart. We got to start praying for the people that uh, are like that in your heart. Yeah. Uh, I've seen it happen where I go, hey, who in your family, uh, you know, do you think would be the toughest? to become a disciple of Jesus. And I'd get a list. I'm like, okay, let's go for them first. Let's pray for them. Let's watch the power of God restore the hearts of men. Let's watch the power of God bring salvation to the hearts of the men and women that you think are not savable. 120,000 wicked people in Assyria. And God saves them all through a powerful message. I want us to get together, not just have a campaign to share our faith with people, but to pray. Pray for those people. Mm -hmm. Pray for the city of Syracuse. Pray for the city of Albany. Pray for the city of Rochester. This is who God has put on our hearts as our mission field, yeah. as he did Nineveh to Jonah. We can't run away from this mission. Now, you're going to be like Jonah. You're going to go up and down, but that's why we need each other. <laughs> To help each other. And we got to focus on the right thing. Let's close out in Matthew chapter 12. Hi. My third and final point is the power of God should direct our path. The power of God should direct our path. Matthew 12. It says, Then some of the Pharisees, the teacher of the law, said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. Isn't that interesting? I don't know how many times I heard that this month. I'm just looking for a sign. Oh, God, just show me a sign. Verse 39, Jesus answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign. But none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now something greater than Jonah is here. And of course he's talking about Jesus. Jesus was in the heart of the earth for three days. And God resurrected him with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is what we have. We have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. And this is what we need to look at. It's the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord, Jesus Christ. This is the big picture. Right. He died so the whole world could hear this powerful message. And we've got to make sure that, like Jonah, we make the right decisions. We go out. And we share our faith, even when we don't feel like it. Even though we know these people are wicked evil, Jonah did it. I mean, think about it. 120 souls were saved by his preaching. Wow. I hope I can say that at the end of my life. That I was able to hate, help that many people. How am I going to do it? Well, the power of God. How are you going to do it? The power of God. Right. The power of God brings salvation. If it's on your heart, the only thing that will stop us is our own circumstances. Sitting on the hill, just looking at our life, looking at our bellies, and God is like, no, come on. we got to restore our hearts. There are people out there that don't know their left hand from their right hand. And we've got to help them out. Not because of our wisdom, but because of God's Word. We can bring them to God's Word. And so, today, as uh, we look at the power of God that brings salvation, the power of God that restores the hearts of men and women. Let the power of God direct us. Let's look at the facts. Let's look at some facts. Our plan to go to Albany. Kyle, Christian, Nassim already found jobs this week. I was talking
talking about restoration with Germain. That was the power of God. Uh, with Howard, we were together. Howard's one of my best friends. And he was reminding me that uh, he had, I would say, fallen away, lost faith in what God could do in his life. He hadn't worked in years and years and years. Yeah. And then God restored his heart. And uh, he's been working full time the last three years. Mm -hmm. He's been engaged in people's lives. On, and Father. he's been a standout yeah. disciple. Yeah. And last year we appointed him as a shepherd. <laughs> this is the power of God. Yeah. Uh, some of the brothers, uh, uh, Neil and Terry, we're, we're on a Zoom call with a guy that really wants to get his, right, his heart right with God. He had been going to church for seven years, but he felt like he had left a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we've been getting in there. We were like, hey, take that cargo and get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> get rid of that faithlessness. God can totally use you to do great things. Um, and he's doing it. And he decided he needs to be in Syracuse to really be strong. Wow. So he's moving here. He'll be yeah. here in a few weeks. Uh, Joba. Joba. Yeah, so. <laughs> Uh, wedding news. Andrew oh. and Julissa, of course, getting oh, married. Yeah. And, um, and so Jill and I have been doing premarital counseling and, uh, and also phone calls from the parents. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was great. I was talking to um, Andrew's mom, and in the conversation, uh, she reminded me that before John and I, where's John? Before John and I studied the Bible with him, uh, Andrew had a part-time job, but most of the time he's at home in his room feeling depressed mm -hmm. and anxious about life. Mm -hmm. And then the power of God that brings him salvation totally changes him. Yeah. Come on. I mean, come on. I don't know anyone happier than Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's going to be married to the most amazing oh, sister. This is the power of God. Yeah. Wow. Quit looking for a sign and look at the power That's of what God said. is doing. Yeah. Baptizing family news. Oh, oh. oh what? <laughs> Linda. Yeah. 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 Let's go, Linda. Come on. Oh. We want to get to Albany, we want to get to Rochester. Yeah. That's my prayer. Of course, Sharon's prayer was I want to baptize my family. Yeah. And so you're a double whammy right there. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, this is the power of God. God is moving. Come on, Dave. We also wanted uh, a Latin ministry. Remember that in January? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And I was like, okay. It's going to be a lot of work, but let's see what God does. <laughs> and, uh, you know, last week, Gene baptizes his mom and dad, Carlos and Nick. <laughs> Just have lunch with them. Have dinner with them. You're going to see this is the future of the Latin ministry right now. <laughs> Love God with a passion. They're so passionate about God. They just needed the right doctrine. They needed the right doctrine, and then they saw it. They saw it, and they're like, we're all in. What do we do next? You know, Amen. what do we do? And so I'm, I'm super fired up. That's Not cool. only is Gene getting to baptize his mom and dad, but they're, they're the seeds of the Latin ministry. Yeah. I could go on and on and on, but listen, the power of God needs to direct mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. This is the sign. It's the power of God, of what we're doing. If you're not sure what's going on, maybe check your heart. Are you all in? Mm -hmm. Is this what you want in your life? The Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations. God is doing it. God yeah. is doing it. And we get to have the honor of being part of it. Why? Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the resurrection of every single soul that makes Jesus Lord and is baptized with him and resurrects to live a new life. At this time, as a family, we're going to take communion. Amen? Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this time to look at the sign.
the power of salvation, the power of your restoration of our hearts, God. As we take communion, God, I pray that, we, uh, that you restore each one of our hearts to the full, that we each make a commitment to you. Uh, sometimes we don't know what to do, God, but we just rest on your power. God, I pray that uh, you heal anybody who needs to be healed physically, emotionally, and spiritually. God, give us the strength to be able to go out and bring a powerful message, the message of restoration, the message of resurrection, what you've done in each one of our lives. Mm -hmm. God, thank you for the broken body of Jesus as an example of someone who's willing to give up their body as we take the bread. Let it be a reminder. And as we take the cup, the juice that represents his blood, that forgives us of all of our sin, even the sin this morning, if we had a fight with our spouse, whatever, God, you will forgive us, God, and refresh us. God, I pray for a refreshing today. And